Hi, welcome to End Time Country Living. We have some black bears that are about white. And there's a whole bunch, and there's some over there, and there's a big bunch all over our property. But not much. There's some over here that are having school jump around in. Because black because they keep us. When I was um going to pick blackberries with mommy, I said, I heard something. Oh, there was a squirrel running across the road in front of the bush. Mm -hmm. Blackberry bush. And so oh, well, then we will see uh, some deals by the blackberry bush over, over on the on not our property side. It's the other side of the road that we, when mom was picking blackberries with mommy and me, we saw a deer. A baby deer and a mommy deer that jumped over the, the gate. Some of the blackberry things, like these hanging in my way, I have to do this or something to pick one here or here. I would all heal if there's some white and black, so. This one's the most one that is hanging down from all the way there, they don't know, all the way down to here. So, so what, do, what do I use to chop down the blackberry vines to get them out of the way? A uh, seesaw or chainsaw or... Chainsaw? What did <laughs> I use the chainsaw? What's on the ground by your feet? What do you think I might use that for? A knife to cut down the blackberry vines. Yeah, is that a good thing to use, you think? I chopped them down with that? Yeah. So this morning, I actually, I don't know if it's this morning or not, it's getting towards noon. Anyway, wanted to show you guys quickly how I chop down some of the blackberry vines and keep them under control around here so we can get around our paths. Some people call it bushwhacking, getting rid of the bushes that are in the way. So around here, this is about time for all the blackberries to be ripe. So we're going to be picking them soon, so I want to get all the blackberry vines down uh, nicely. So things like what's behind me here, these big arches, are a big common um, occurrence around here. So, And it, the berry vines tend to grow over the paths very easily and also down below where the children want to walk they have to go around back and forth trying to get around them so good way to get those down is what I like to use is a machete. Now this is a nice one that I got from my sister in Benin so this one is a uh, hand forged um, Beninian uh, machete so it has a, a rubber tire handle that's been riveted on there with some staples and nails, looks like, but it's fairly decent as far as the you know the handle quality and it keeps an edge very nicely. So the other thing I like to keep uh, keep it sharp with is of course my steel, um, and this is a little bit more challenging than a kitchen knife. I think I've showed you in the past how I sharpen my kitchen knives, so there's a little bit different method of. Uh, doing it on a machete. It's very similar to a sigh, how you tr keep a sigh sharpened, only I use the steel so it doesn't uh, wear the edge away. It just um, brings it up to a point again. Okay, so this is about a 15 inch machete. And so I've got the blade quite sharp already. Not quite shaving sharp, but you know, very nice and sharp here. And you can look down the, the edge of it here get it on the on the side here and you look and see if there's any kind of shiny spots and there's a couple right up the tip here of course it's never not going to be in focus but you get the idea so you're looking down here and you see any little shiny spots yeah you can see maybe see see a couple there anyway you look for, look down the side and you say oh there's a shiny spot that's the part where it needs to be sharpened so and also just every so often I Come back here, so I'm, I'm doing a push, push motion, motion. Instead of moving the blade, I'm moving my steel since the steel's smaller. So I'm going to do several strokes. Start at one end, bring it down like that, 
at, oh, 30, 40 degree angle, probably about a 30 degree angle. Something a little bit greater than the cut. It's about a 23 degree grind on here, the edge. So I'm going to bring it a little bit more so I'm over the edge of it a little bit, make sure I have good edge contact. And just do a quick motion like this. If there's any spots like right up here at the tip where I probably hit something hard with it. Um, sometimes if it's too bad, I'll have to get the um, file out and bring it back to sharp again. If it's not too bad, then I'll just go ahead and use the steel on it to bring it back. Get a, some good hard strokes on there and on both sides. Or you can do fancy top and bottom, however you want to do it. But basically, I'll, always pulling the blade away, not into it. I don't, I don't want to be going this way where the sharp edge is here. I don't want to be going in there because it doesn't really stand up the edge quite as nicely. It kind of wears it away and doesn't make it as nice. So I pull it away. It does a much better job. Anyway, so that makes it nice and sharp. And I'll show you kind of the t some techniques now. All right, so principles of holding a machete is to use your thumb and your first finger to grab it with and kind of relax these hands more. So you want the machete to do the moving and not your arm. So you can just you know, sit and do this all day long and your arm is just like ugh, worn out, sore, you know, has problems. But if you let the machete do the moving, now gloves I would recommend, a good pair of leather gloves. Because you're not you're gonna do it for about ten minutes with your bare hands and unless you have super tough leathery hands, you're probably gonna be getting some blisters, so. You can grab it like this, close around it, I think like like the number six. <laughs> so like that, around it, and then just kind of let these rest. You don't don't grab it like this, because this means you're gonna do a lot of wrist motion. You want the machete to do the moving. Now I don't always do it exactly the right way. Sometimes I, just, I really want to get a whack at something or I just fling it uh, incorrectly, but most of the time when I'm you know, chopping meticulously at things, try to get the machete to do the moving instead of just rocking back and forth in your wrist. So, just some demonstration here. So here is a normal situation here where there's a path straight through there if you didn't know. Right down in that direction there, but you can't get through it because there's berry vines in the way. Alright, so basically want to take down the berry vines here. So instead of hitting the berry vine square on, perpendicular, always try to do it at a 45 degree angle. Um, even maybe a little bit more. If it's a really tough one, you can even get a lower angle on there. Maybe a 30 degree angle or a 35 degree angle. Something like that. And then come in and chop it at that angle rather than straight on. That'll cut a lot better. And that's that's a general principle for anything that you're cutting to cord cardboard boxes with a knife. You put it, put your uh, knife at a 45 degree angle and it'll slice down uh, much more nicely. And also something to keep in mind is that when you cut, just a flat on hit is not going to cut as nicely as a slice. Slicing is going to do a much better job. So you want to be having a you know, backward and forward motion, you can, you know, probably a pole is probably the normal direction you're going to do it, but to have a more of a slicing motion. So on a big berry vine like this, big arc, I like to kind of take it down in a couple little chunks so that it's, it's small chunks uh, on the ground. So I'm going to start over here like this and just give it a good whack like that. Okay, and then I'm going to move up and Oh, about 18 inches, little chunks like that. Do another slice. And then just kind of take it down. Like that. Some bad ones there. So, in the grass, anything else. And so just kind of whack it, stuff like that. 
Usually I try to tuck my other arm in so that I'm not getting it in the way or, you know, just it's one-handed, so just kind of keep your hand out of the way. Going through here, cleaning stuff back. So you can also kind of step into vines as well if you have stuff that's low. This also works when you uh, don't have a machete or don't have any tool in your hands. You can still bushwhack and get through an area uh, without getting stuck. So you can basically you take, take your foot and use your feet and you kind of back off and you want to approach it and you kind of stomp down, pull back and kind of clean stuff up. walk through an area, push, get up, find the binds, and step on them, get them down. So you have a machete, you, it's a good time to whack stuff down, but just go get through an area, just kind of by walking through an area sideways and keeping your foot at the approach. Keep your, just do a stomp action, get through an area. So now the path is all cleared out, and I can go through it. You can see the path is now clear. Now there are a few other little vines here. The little ones are actually a little harder to cut because they're thinner, but with a good sharp machete you can do it. There's another kind of uh, rough area in here. This has got a lot of organ grape that's growing up, which I like to have. Um, it's just a little prickly and hard to get through. Came out here to uh, find my wife a this little flower here to put, put in the vase to give there, and then like, well, since I'm out here and I'm looking for stuff, I might as well do some chopping on the blackberries because to get to this area, I found I needed to get to the area. So I see one actually over there that I want to get get around there and harvest it because it's quite a pretty one. Let's see. Oh, we got a service berry in here too. Got one service berry. Not too bad. A little service berry there. It's a little purple. It looks just like a little blueberry. A little more round and squatty like the blueberries are. More perfectly round, but this one, I don't know if it's edible or not. Mm. I think it's pretty good. That's pretty good, actually. Didn't know there was a service berry bush back here. Oregon grape stuff are, are edible, but <clears throat> not very tasty. So, but they're another food source. You never know when you may need a food source. So, so we got a thistle in here, and I don't know if that's burdock or dock or what that is exactly. All right, clear this area down here. Make it passable. I'm going after here. Let's see here. Right down here. Where's my other glove? Did I lose it? In here. Just to lay it down here. Put it onto it here. There. Just my glove to hang on to it. It's a pretty one. It's got a couple more heads on there that should open in there in the house. So I'll trim, trim up the base here. Got some of the leaves and put it in a vase. We can enjoy it in the house. Hi, Molly. Put your tongue in your mouth. <laughs> okay, what do you want to say, Molly? Thank you for watching our homestead. <laughs> All right, see you guys on the next video here. Don't forget to like this video, leave me a comment and share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet or liked this page, 
sure to remember to do that. All right, bye-bye.